All right, this is my 2020, late 2020 Prado. So it is a 2.8 litre four cylinder. Um, it has the current model, oh, that's a bit loose. Um, it has a current model engine, so the 150 kilowatt one. Well, it was 150 kilowatt before I've played with it. Um, and I've had it for four years and 113,000 Ks now. Um, it has been a very, very, very good, reliable car. I will, however, tell you all the things that have broken on it in that time from factory. Um, and then I'll tell you all the things, all the accessories that are broken on it, because it's, pr I think I worked out, it's got about 70,000 bucks worth of accessories on it. It's, it's a, I've had a few people get annoyed about these videos when I just talk about the accessories, but you have to understand this is probably not a great indication of what things happen with stock Prados because this is far from a stock Prado. Um, all right, things that have broken from the factory. The rear diff had a manufacturing fault. All the carrier bolts were loose. It ended up leaving me stranded on the beach in Esperance. Um, uh, Toyota warrantied that, um, which took some doing, to be completely honest, because I've got upgraded tires. Uh, but it was absolutely a manufacturing fault. It was not, um, it was not user error, and they confirmed that. Um, I have had the sh studs shear off on a wheel. Um, that was uh, a, the people who serviced my car admitted that, admitted fault. Well, they didn't, they didn't admit fault, but they fixed it. <laughs> um, I've had the amplifier needed to be replaced um, in it because the Bluetooth was unbearably quiet. The Bluetooth audio for when you're on your phone, um, not for music. For music, it was fine. Uh, what else has happened? Oh, I had an oil pressure issue at the very start which has been now rectified on all, all vehicles. Um, basically, it was just a, yeah, they just needed a software update and that was all good. Um, and that's it. Nothing else from factory has broken. However, some of the other things, I'll, as I go through the car, I'll explain everything that is broken on it that I have put on it. So we'll start from the very front. Bushranger Nighthawk 9-inch VLI, so volt, uh, the, the variable light intensity, in other words, dimmable. Spotties, flawless. Absolutely perfect. Uh, the worst issue I've had on them was a loose connection. Um, uh, really, really, really happy with them. I ran them in my previous car, so I've been running these for seven years now and never had a drama. Um, this is their 21-inch Bushranger VLI light bar. Again, really good. All internally switched, all built-in relays, wiring kit is insanely easy to put in. Um, and yeah, they've been great. Winch, I did have a Bushranger winch. It failed um, and I've replaced it with a Runva 13 XP. Um, and I've had it for a year, I'd say. Uh, pulls very well. Yeah, like no complaints there. It's, pulls. Yeah, pulls extremely well and it's been flawless. It works exactly like a winch should work. Bar, <laughs> this is bar number two. <laughs> it's an off-road animal Toro. Um, I've hit four roos with it, including some very big ones. I accidentally ran into a concrete steel bollard that I thought, like, I thought I would have ruined the car. It hit it so hard. I just couldn't see it. It was like this high. And I was doing probably only 20 k's an hour, but it went from 20 to stopped in like a millimeter. Um, made a huge bang and the bar was perfect. So very happy with the strength of the bar. However, my batch had a manufacturing fault on the first one um, and it caused the internal structure to crack and it, yeah, it failed. So it, had to, it was covered under warranty that got a new one. Would I get it again? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think this is a great looking bar, it's very strong, it does not move at all. Uh, really easy to work on, putting a winch in these things is like the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, I'm happy with it, it's a steel bar, uh, weighs some kilos, like 90 kilos or something. Uh, GME 2.1 DBI antenna, which as you can see the bolt is a little bit loose on that, <laughs> I need to tighten that. Um, well, also, they've up, the powder coating on my old one was starting to go on this on the bar, and I can feel that the powder coating on the new bars is very different. So I'm impressed by that. 2.1 DBI um, UHF antenna, 
has been perfect. It's great. I've got the GME XRS system and it's got great reception, works very well. Um, under the bonnet, tune, fuel filter, uh, sorry, secondary fuel filter, diff breathers, all perfect. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still not going to talk about who did the tune, not because I don't think it was great, I think it, it has been great, but just because I want to give it like a year plus of using it and towing and doing all that kind of stuff before I give the name out because I don't want to recommend something that I haven't tested thoroughly. It also has a K-On transmission cooler uh, and that has been really good. It got the temps down about 25 degrees. Um, definitely recommend that for anyone towing with a Prado because they do not come with a factory transmission cooler, which I think is a bit crap, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> I ripped a CV boot, but that's my fault. So not, not the car's fault. It has a bit of bush wraps at the front. Um, some of their pro that's in good condition and that's oh, I've had a, my porter boat fall off and scratch it and it's just scratched the wrap the car's still fine so that's been really good I had the bush wraps cape on the side um, I flogged the absolute crap out of it for four years um, and I've then replaced it with the pro no advance the five-year wrap so the old, old one was only supposed to be on there for a year, but I kept it on there for nearly four. Uh, peeled off, it took 16 minutes per side to remove. No damage, the car looks great. So I'd go bush wraps again. Actually, there's no way I would ever buy another new car and not wrap it, full stop. The, I've got a Cellfi Go in there, which is like a 4G, 5G booster. And I've got the GME antenna. I used to have a Black Hawk one and it was rubbish. Um, and then, so the first Blackhawk one failed, the second Blackhawk one then failed, and then I put a GME on there and I wondered why the hell I ever ran a Blackhawk. Um, wheels and tyres. Um, I've got Method 703s in bronze. They're a 17 by 8.5, zero offset. Just want to quickly mention here in terms of the rims and tyres, uh, they've got a thing called bead grip technology, which I thought was a bit of a gimmick. Um, basically means the beads stay on to the tyres really, really well. Uh, the rims stay on, the, the wheels stay on the beads really well. Anyway, um, I actually had a bit of a, an accident where I, had, I didn't put a valve back in properly this week. I ran my car sideways in many points down the beach at one PSI in my back tyre flogging it on some of the softest sand I've ever been on. The bead didn't come off. I've never had a tire come off the bead in this car and I've run it single figures up bad tracks lots of times. Highly recommend something with bead grip technology. It's not a it's not a bead lock, so it's all legal. They're very strong rims and they bloody hold the tires. Wrapped in a um, Nitto Trail Grappler mud terrain in a 29570R17. In other words, 33 and a half. Um, I have standard upper control arms. I have a tiny bit of rubbing on a um, body mount uh, bit, which I'm gonna take to on track fab and they can chop it down for me. And they mod plate it and it's very inexpensive. So I'm gonna do that. The reason I went up a tire size for my 285s was just because I wanted to run a Toyo, Toyo or a Nitto because they're in all the t history of all my tires, I ran Yokohamas, r ruined them. I ran Maxxis, ruined them. Ran BFGs, ruined them. And I've never been able to kill a Nitto or a Toyo. So, um, uh, <clears throat> I did have to put aftermarket mud flaps on, so they're like $10 mud flaps to make this fit. But overall, it only rubs in reverse at full lock um, if, I'm, if, it, if the wheel's compressed a bit. Um, clear view mirrors suck. <laughs> they don't fold in very much. <laughs> They're electric fold. The only reason I got them is because they have the cameras underneath. They scratch really, really easily. Um, they used to shake a lot. I had to change them to the convex lens because I couldn't stand the flat lens on it. And I had to tighten them physically, like bend all the pins in to make it tighter. Why they're not just tight from factory, I don't know, but they're not. So, yeah, um, I would get them again, I guess, because they're the only ones that do the 360 cameras, because it's, they're the only option for towing mirrors, because I tow a caravan. So they pull out like that. They are disgusting. 
they scratch. <laughs> um, four out of ten. <laughs> um, Donald Industry Sidesteps. The best sidesteps I've ever seen. <laughs> um, they are so strong. The powder coating on them is unreal. I've dragged these things on so many rocks and the powder coat hasn't even cracked. They've got a little bit of grip on them. They're a nice shape. They fit in with the lines of the car. They're not too heavy. They're made by a local dude. He makes them for one vehicle and it's a Prado 150 and I'm stoked because they have just been great. Now, I wanna say quickly, some of this stuff I bought, some of this stuff was provided to me. It doesn't make a difference if it was provided to me. In fact, I'm about to show you something that was provided to me that I hate. Light force, rock 20s, suck. The light's great, but they leak. Two of the six have leaked, so they're coming off. I just haven't got round to it, and I'm gonna put in some, oh, I'll get it quickly. I'll put a picture on the screen. I'm getting some little Terra Loom ones. They look good. Haven't tried them, don't know what they're like. They're bulky color. Terra Loom generally make good gear, so we'll see how, how we go. Um, front runner roof rack has been a roof rack. It's great, it works very well. I will say, there is a tiny rattle on corrugations that it's this. Don't love that. Uh, I, I'm actually considering just pulling those side rails off because I don't really need them. Although it's pretty useful because I put firewood up there. I'll make a decision on that later. Might take them off, might silicon that because I only figured that out like a few months ago that that's what was rattling. Yeah, maybe a nylon washer. Anyway, yeah. Um, I know some people just gaffer tape them up. Um, <clears throat> oh, go, go on this side actually. Moonlight fabrication, stainless steel snorkel. So cool, makes a good noise. Not at all noisy inside the car. Looks great, L fits with the lines of the car. Very well installed by them. Um, would absolutely get that again. Not, a, not even a shadow of a doubt. That is a great product. Um, never had any leaks or anything, obviously. Uh, let's keep going back. Oh, suspension. I run a um, Dobinson's MRR three and a half ton GVM upgrade from Malaga Suspensions. Uh, it rides really well. It's all adjustable. It's got like 40 different adjustments or something. Uh, you can do, it's got three different areas of adjustment and then lots of different points of adjustment. It's, it's great. So that's like a 150 kilo front, 450 constant rear. You can't change that if you want the, the GVM upgrade. Fred, bring it here. Come here. Fred, bring the stick. Bring. Come on. Give. Fred, give. Hey, back. Ah, ah, ah. Dickhead. Um, rides really well. The adjustment took me a bit of getting my head around it, but it has worked great. I've mean, no, no issues with that at all. Also in here, um, Bendix performance brake upgrade. One of the best things I've ever done. Um, from standard, these things are quite wallowy um, and they really dive under brakes. Um, and even with the upgraded suspension that really helped it, but it still used to dive under brakes. Once I put the Bendix kit in with the upgraded brake lines and the better rotors um, and pads, I found it, it now doesn't. It brakes straight. It doesn't dive because the rear brakes are more powerful. So they never actually changed the brake bias on it. Didn't have to play with the cylinder or anything. In fact, I, had a, I got it serviced out there at Hunter and the first thing the guy said was, your brakes are awesome. Um, so yeah, it's amazing, like just lines, rotors and pads made all that difference. Uh, when your brakes wear out in your Prado, do yourself a favor, spend a little bit more money and get that done. Um, or if your brakes suck to, to begin with, put them in. I drove my mate's 300 series GX, Cam from Wild Touring, um, and the first thing I said was, you need to upgrade your brakes because they're not very good uh, compared to this. This thing pulls up way better. Um, it's got a red arc 120 watt solar panel that does solar panel things. It gets about five or six amps, keeps the fridge happy. 
Max Tracks Extremes and normal Max Tracks with a pin that amazingly no one's stolen. Um, <coughs> Starlink mount from Kaon here. Uh, so I can put my Starlink on my roof and then drive at 100 k's an hour like an idiot. Don't do that. I just did it to, for testing, but you're not supposed to. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go on the other side. Bush Company 270 XT Max awning. Yes, that's a mouthful. There's a 270 XT that goes around the back. I used to have that. Um, I then had kids and decided I wanted to have it go both ways. So this one comes all the way to the front wouldn't go back they weigh quite a lot i think it's like 30 kilos but i don't feel it i can't feel it on the roof um, it makes no difference to the way the car drives um, and it has been fantastic just bulletproof um, there are some awnings that i think are a little bit better with water pooling because um, this does pull a little bit of water in a couple of places would i change it to one of those awnings nope no, I wouldn't. I've got three Bush Company awnings. I've had three Bush Company awnings. I still own two. The other one I gave to my best mate, still going strong. Um, if I was to get another awning, I'd get that again. Come around the back. I got a new wheel back. So PM Canvas make these. Um, Nathan and Kelly, absolute legends. They're Perth family. I got a new bin bag, not because the old one was faulty and it was made by them as well, but because it used to, it hung down a bit lower and it just used to hit on my, it used to drag on my caravan, um, on the hitch, because the caravan hitch is quite a lot going on. Um, really good quality. They make it to your specs, they're fully custom made, so you can go to them and tell them exactly what you want. Everything's removable, everything's great quality. You can still get your spare wheel off easily enough. Oh, I had to modify the rear, the rear wheel carrier and move it up. Uh, about 15 centimeters, 15 millimeters to get this larger spare tire on the back. Um, and I have a rear bar coming. <clears throat> Crap everywhere. Um, all right, let's go through this as quickly as I can. Front runner table, very good. I must say, uh, I love the way it fits. I would like it to be 20 centimeters taller. Uh, I get a little bit of a sore back using it for long periods of time, um, but bulletproof quality it's kind of heavy but <sighs> would i do it again yeah yeah i would i'd still get it I, I, I use it you know i use it a lot um these drawers are made by a company called pro camp solutions who have now merged with custom installations um and they've got a new name uh they're great i've beaten the crap out of them everything still works um yeah rob rob's brackets on insta um, he built them and he, he did a great job. Um, I've got a full water system in here. So this is a hose reel, it's a Bunnings hose reel. I've got a K-On underbody 30 litre tank, stainless tank, which is really, really useful. Um, and then like a little sea flow pump. And this is a bidet hose from Bunnings. Yes, the one that you clean your bum hole with. Um, bum holes have been cleaned with that. <laughs> and post it to Instagram, and the guy whose bum hole it was is holding the camera. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put a screenshot up, because screw it, I can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was already thinking you are going to do that. Um, by the way, shameless plug, I now have Jarrah patches, which are cool. They're available on my website. <laughs> Limited run, 500. Um, uh, <clears throat> what else? I've got airbags from Airbag Man. Um, they're really useful. I use them every time I tow, I put the, ba the bags like 30, 40 PSI, depending on how heavy the trailer is. Um, and it sits perfectly level, means it drives really well. Um, and I've got the in-cab controls. So ARB twin compressor, I just turn that on and then I can go boom. Why is my compressor not on? <laughs> Scratch that, ARB compressor sucks. Oh, that has never not worked. No, that's never not worked when I've been with you. All right, I'll check the fuse on that. That's interesting. I'll let you know. I'll put it on the screen if it was a fuse or not. Um, actually, I'm just going to quickly check now. It works again. Now, um, one good thing about this car is I've got an Egan DC hub, which makes fault finding very easy. So I've just pulled the fuses out. Who knows, maybe one of them's loose or something like that. Anyway, just poked around it's all working now now the dc hub is great right 
It's really easy for fault finding. If, if I've got a blown fuse, it's got a little LED light attached to it. Um, so I can find any faults. This is my second one though. <laughs> so the first one, which was version one prototype, um, failed. There's no other word for it. Um, it had a burnt out contact. Um, it then wouldn't get power from the, from the starter battery. Um, and therefore my lithium battery wouldn't charge. They've rectified it. They've showed me how they've rectified it. All the new ones are all good. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to pretend that. I think, you know, the owner of it is Heiner Klarman and Andrew St. Pierre White. Uh, I think Andrew would absolutely understand if, if anyone that I have to give full transparency of anything that happens on this car. Um, would I go it again? Yeah, I'd go it again. Um, it's been really useful. It's way easier to wire. I think, I mean, I've had one fault, right? The entire time I've had it. Um, and I think I would have had a lot more faults with wiring had I not had it. So also the fact that I could just isolate it and go, oh, that's it. And if I had actually spent 20 minutes with a soldering iron, I could have fixed it. So if, I, if that had happened in the middle of nowhere, I could have pulled it out, soldered up those terminals and fixed it. But obviously like if I had the, I had the option to upgrade to the new one under warranty, I'm gonna do that. So yeah, um, you know, they, they said it's happened in a very small number of them. There you go, that's what happened. Um, so I'll put that cover back on. So annoying having baby seats in here, blocking it though. I think if I had my time again, I'd maybe put it somewhere. Oh, no, there's no other good spot for it. You just got to deal with the fact that you've got to pull a baby seat out every time <laughs> you want to work on it. Also, I've noticed since I got the new one, I'm getting really, really good charge from my manager. So this is a manager, Red Arc Manager 30. Um, which has been a really good unit. I'm getting, I'm getting like up to 36 amps charge. It's only rated to 30, but yeah, it's giving really good charge from it. Um, oh, speaking of charge. Okay, I've got a lithium cranking battery now. So it's an SSB battery. It's 1400 cold cranking amps and 60 amp hours um, under bonnet. With all this DCS stuff happening, I'm gonna bench test it and I'll let you know the results of that because I wanna see um, if this thing is performing, um, again, given to me, um, but I'm going to be completely transparent. Like the Egan was given to me, but I'm going to be completely transparent. Um, I'm going to bench test it and let you know what the capacity is after two years of pretty intense use. I will say it starts the car like a champion. Fred, go away. <laughs> ah, ah. More importantly, it winches like a demon. Um, where previously you have all voltage drop and you can't run your headlights and stuff like that. Uh, if your battery's a little bit low, nah, not with a lithium cranker, it just pulls like crazy. And it's just about to rain, so I'm gonna put this back in the car, get that all folded up, and we'll keep recording in a minute. Now, just because we just put this up so that we can get out of the rain. Something to note, and I've been trapped by this, these straps here, right, they put them up here. Make sure you tuck them in under your roof because this happens. You close them in your door, water will run down and it will get in that gap. And in my case, it leaks it perfectly into the baby seat. <laughs> so thankfully I didn't have my kids with me, but there was one trip where it was piecing down with rain and it ended up with like that much water sitting in the bottom of the baby seat. <laughs> so yeah. Make sure you put those up out of the way. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, lovely. Big bit of glass. Good for someone with bare feet. <clears throat> All right, we'll keep going in the back here. Um, the compressor does work. So with the compressor, I'm able to adjust my airbags here. You'll also see this airbag man controller only one side's working on the, on the um, pressure monitor. I don't know what's happening there. It doesn't actually bother me. I that's why I haven't bothered to f like fault find it. It could just be the hose has popped off or something. It's probably something simple. But anyway, I haven't fixed it because I haven't, I've just been lazy. And because I always do them at the same time. So I run like five PSI when it's, when it's empty. I always do them at the same time, so I always know what they are. And like, if I'm ever worried that one might be a bit different to the other, all I do is dump all the air out of the bag so they're flat, turn the compressor on, and then both at the same time. So I know they're gonna be the same. 
anyway, not really an issue. This extra pump system here is so I can fill my water tank because there's no pour in function in the Kaon tank. Um, so I've just plumbed in an extra, an extra pump so that I can draw from like a jerry can and pump into my own tank if I, if I need it, uh, if needed. <clears throat> but you can also, there are tons of solutions like little, little lithium drop in things to go into jerrys and stuff with just like a hose fitting. Um, yeah, there are tons of ways of getting it in except for pouring it in. So, um, yeah, I still use it, right? Like it's, it's still by far the best water option. Something to also note is you do need a Toyota factory bull bar, sorry, tow bar to fit that tank. So if you've got like an aftermarket one, it will not fit. Uh, but they're such a good tank and because they're stainless, they always taste good. Um, hose reel for the air as well. Uh, and I've got one of these ARB inflators and I've put, I drilled out the rivets, put a bolt on it with a um, nylock nut and now it stays down when you're airing up. <laughs> and you pull it back up. So yeah, it's been really useful. A lot of like crash pad little storage things. They've been great. Um, bunch of stuff down the sides. Hey, Fred, go away. These light force switches are kind of crap. The lights don't work in two of them. Uh, they kind of bind up. I've had to like shave the edges. I wouldn't recommend that. It, I, I got them because you can fully customize them. Um, but yeah, I mean like, Light works on that, doesn't work on that, doesn't work on that, works on that, doesn't work on that. There you go. Um, what else? Pull out table has been great. I, I do everything with stainless, so it's heat proof, um, and that comes out as well with the fridge. A national, oh no, no, that's a national lunar, it's not a national lunar fridge, I've never had a national lunar fridge. This is a Snowmaster 82 litre traveler. I'm not even gonna talk about it, other than it is a fantastic fridge, but you can't get them. So there's no stock in Australia. It hasn't been for like two years. Really annoying. Please, Snowmaster, bring fridges back here because they are great fridges. I'd like people to be able to buy them. Um, never had a problem with it. Bulletproof. Starting to get some surface rust on it because it's 304, but I'll put some Barkeeper's Friend on that and this will be like new. Uh, I have hit these latches about 10 trillion times on the drawers. You go in, you smash it, you bend it, you get the pliers out, you bend it back. It's just a process. Um, uses quite a lot of power, but I don't really care. If you have a look here, look at all the gashes that have come out of the drawers from me bashing them. <laughs> Cause you just like, particularly if it's on an angle and it's got all the weight and it just slides in. Now I said I was gonna change these drawers. I have changed my mind because I figured out the Fred can go in between the two baby seats. I'm gonna keep them. I do love this setup. I do love having an 82 lead fridge. It's so functional, this setup. <clears throat> um, okay, what else? Oh, Polaris dash cam and electric rear view camera has been great. I can actually see at the back of my car now because um, I've got this big k -on barrier, which is really useful. I've got the 1500 watt inverter up there, um, all this stuff mounted to it. It's super useful. Um, you know, survival first aid kits and all that stuff all mounted like molly, molly fittings. Can't fault it, uh, but I can't see at the bloody back. So having this little dash cam and electric rear view camera has been really, really useful um, for number one, capturing, capturing stupid things that happen. Um, and number two, actually just being able to see at the back. k -on table has been through some stuff. Uh, all I've had go on that was I wore out one of these pieces of elastic. So that was like a, a dollar fix. Um, built-in breadboard, which whenever I forget my breadboard, this has been really useful. I've used this breadboard way more than I thought I would. Mainly I just store stuff in here. Um, and this is where I build my cameras usually because that is not great for building cameras. That's probably because of the setup I've got here and being able to access this drawer, this is better for cooking and like making drinks and stuff that's right in front of the fridge. But this is like more of my workbench style thing. Um, yeah, definitely do recommend that. I've got some shelves to go in here, but I'm lazy and I haven't put them in. Um, <clears throat> so something that's incredibly useful. So this is a great table. It's actually very strong. It's also storage. And I've got this little leg for it if I want to really strong. I have never used that in four years, not once. So, you know, take from that what you will. <laughs> that doesn't, just doesn't really need it. It's just, you know, strong enough. I've used this table so much. I mean, how many drinks do you reckon we've made on this table? Like, countless. countless. Trips yeah, coffees, you know, making rondas, tins, making little cheese platters. Like, it's the first thing to come out. Well traveled. Yeah. You've got this, don't you? Yeah. 
just yeah. a black powder coat. Yeah, it looks sick. Yeah. Um, do you use it a lot? All the time. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at the interior. My interior used to be pretty simple. It is not anymore. <clears throat> All right. Okay, I have a Garmin Overlander. Polaris rear vision thing with a dash cam. So you can see, here, I'll get that. You can switch, oh, focus, focus, focus. Okay, you can switch it. Oh, that's been moved. So you can switch it to say whatever you want. So that's rear, that's front. And then when you've got it on rear, you can actually move it around so you can see what you want to see. Um, <coughs> JBL head unit is pretty crap. Uh, it often, does yours ever do the thing where it won't change volume? Uh, if I'm reversing, never, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Change volume when you're reversing. Yeah, you spin uh, the dial, do the thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've had plenty of times where the, the volume just doesn't work, yeah. reversing or not. The guy was posting on Facebook about it today. Um, about oh, useful. Heated and cooled seats are 10 out of 10. Highly recommend them, they are great. Uh, center console fridge is great. It only works when the engine's running, but it's very, very effective. This is a VX model. Um, the leather seats are great. Um, <laughs> the noise from the jet is not great. I'm gonna close the door. <laughs> um, I've got a scan gauge and you can see now it's not working because, oh, there we go. I've off, I, I often have to re, re plug that in. It's a scan gauge three, the latest one. Um, very, very useful, but a dicky plug on the back of it. Garmin Overlander has been fantastic. This little screen here is for my caravan so that I can see what's behind that. So you can see there's a lot of screens in here. It's pretty busy. Um, GMA XRS unit is just, they're just brilliant. Um, very clear, um, magnetic base, BT1 thing, so you can just press that um, and, it, and there's a little microphone there and I don't have to grab the, hand, grab the unit, uh, I can just talk from my seat, which is useful. Down here, Red Arc Toe Pro, just great. They work very well, brake controller. This, lock-up kit, Richard's lock-up kit. Again, something I was given. Um, that burnt out the solenoid in my gearbox. Not very stoked about that. So I've since ordered an MM 4x4 one. I ordered that three days ago and I'm gonna put that in. This is the dimmer for my spotlights. Throttle controller, which I never use. Um, it has electric seats and an electric steering wheel. So when you turn it on, it comes and moves to your position. And electric seats, as I said. Now, there's no bloody memory setting on it. So, it's only in the Kakadu. So my wife, you know that? Mm -hmm. My wife's four foot 11 and a half. I'm 5'11". That means I've nearly got a fl friggin' flat battery by the time my seat's racked itself all the way to the front <laughs> or all the way to the back. Like, <laughs> I would far prefer a manual seat. <laughs> I like the lumbar adjustments. Look, at this is all the crap that sprayed in on us the other day when yeah. we were bogged. <laughs> They're a comfy seat, very comfy. It's got CarPlay, which is excellent. I would never have a car without Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, depending on which platform you use. Uh, it's held up pretty well to the abuse of kids as well. Um, now, as far as just like how the thing drives, take one for a test drive, that's how they drive. Um, but after 113,000 Ks, it still drives like that. It's still like, it still feels tight. It feels decisive. It feels very safe. I'm very happy having um, my wife's a less experienced driver with like heavy loads and um, caravans and things like that on the back. I'm so happy with her driving it. I hand the keys to pretty much anyone and I can relax. Whereas previous cars like my 80 series, you kind of, you got to be on alert. Um, this is relaxing to drive. It's relaxing to do Ks in. Um, it's not stressful. Uh, the only th kind of issue I have is when it's fully loaded with a caravan, it kind of hunts gears between fourth and fifth because it just can't quite maintain fifth at 100. That's with it, it, only if I've got a headwind, if I've got no, no wind or if it's cold, then I'm fine. Pulls well up hills. It, um, 
Oh, one other thing that also there was an issue with was my DPF. I'll let you use your imagination of what I did to fix that DPF problem. Say no more. <laughs> Power wise, it's putting out about 700 Newton meters at the fly. Um, so warranty, good luck. You know, I might get warranty for my footrest or something, um, or like windscreen. Oh yeah, <laughs> if you touch the door handles, it unlocks. So that's how you lock it, but the keys are inside. So you can, yeah, press buttons and make it lock and unlock. Uh, really annoying at the car wash, it constantly goes off. Um, <laughs> it has electric mirrors, which I actually like because uh, I always know my car's locked. Um, servicing costs. It costs as much as a four-cylinder car. It's Toyota's medium price in terms of parts. They're very good quality parts though, so you're, very, you're rarely replacing them, but things like fuel filters and stuff, yeah, yeah, look, that's more expensive than some uh, cheaper cars, um, but it's cheaper than premium, you know, European cars. So yeah, it's, uh, I think my, most of my services are about 600 bucks, I'd say six to 800, depending on what needs doing. Um, but I had cap price servicing for the first 60,000 Ks or something, um, when it was like 240 bucks a service or something. 290 something. No, I, I, I was the old one, I was 240. Oh, it's since gone up. Um, <clears throat> but I ran out of that like 50,000 Ks ago. So <laughs> um, yeah, it costs what it costs. You get it done every 10,000 Ks. Um, uh, but it's a very, very, like it's a reliable car. So not, yeah, compared to running my old 80 series, this is cheap. Man, that thing was expensive. Things I regret. Uh, I regret not running more stuff through this, to this back door, more wiring to this back door before I started. I can't access in there anymore. So it's really hard for me to run stuff in here. I would love like a strip light here, um, maybe even some power points, that kind of thing. I wish I'd run wiring through to here earlier, um, but I can't anymore. Uh, I did, was clever enough to do a seven core up here with a Deutsch plug. Um, so that's just trailer wiring, trailer plug wiring, like this stuff. Um, but it means I've got all seven cores. I've then got a control box on the top that means I can pull these through and I can put my solar through it. Everything goes through that, which is really useful and very neat. Um, and then it just goes in, in through here. Uh, something I really regret is not doing a remote switching system. Something like a Red Arc TVMS Rogue or Red Vision or even one of those like Chinese ones, apparently they're actually not too bad. Um, or like a DC relay hub thing that they've got from Egan. One of those, I regret not being able to switch these side lights on and the rear lights on from the cab, because that would be so useful for reversing, for finding campsites. I'd love to be able to switch my cell fire on from the, in, from the front of the cab. That would be great. Um, I have a Red Vision display, but I don't actually have Red Vision. It's just, that just tells me what's happening with charging. It's not actually any controls. Um, yeah, if I had my time again, I would put like a TVMS Rogue would probably be enough, which is only like a 10, it only has like 10 accessories, not 30, I think, in the full Red Vision. Um, <clears throat> I'd put a screen in the front and a screen in the back so that I could control everything from everywhere, um, even my phone. That would be the dream, but it's wired now and I'm going to use it and I'm just bitching that I didn't think of it then. Underneath it, I've put Lightforce Rock 10 lights inside the side steps to replace the factory puddle lights. Uh, they're great. There you go. It's another Lightforce thing, but they've been flawless. I got steady ones. Yeah, there you go. The He's got steady ones. Yeah. So yeah, uh, because I pulled the side steps off, I had to put them in, but the factory wiring is just, you know, twin core. So it's easy, it was a super easy job. They're just sicker flexed in, into the side steps. Um, uh, nice and bright, low voltage. Something that is really annoying is there's nothing you can do about it. If you leave a door open on this car, these underbody lights are on. Now you can't see that during the day. So that is so easy to do. Or even just like, oh, I wanna like make sure I've got access to stuff. So I'll just leave the door open. You leave it on all day and all of a sudden you've got a flat battery at the end of camp. I burnt my first battery out on that in like 18 months. And then I replaced it with a lithium. Um, so two and a half years actually, that's how long I've had it. Two and a half years I've had that lithium cranker. So we're getting really close to the three years they rate, rate it for. 
The thing with the lithium cranker to consider is if it dies, <coughs> it suddenly dies. They turn off to zero volts. So you can't run your car at all. Whereas if you have like a normal lead acid battery, you can run your car at 10 volts with the alternator kind of topping it up. Whereas the lithium, the, bat, the BMS will turn it off completely. Um, so that's why I want to do that bench test. And I'll make sure that I do a video on that um, when I bench tested it, because I think that's really important. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. I've got the Kaon UV, oh actually, and I've, you don't know this, but I've actually busted one of my shot guards. Oh, did you? Yeah, I've got a Kaon, I've got Kaon shot guards, which are so strong. Did we bust them last week? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I busted the shot guard on the caravan as well. <laughs> so we did that last week in Harvey. No, 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 it was before Harvey. Was, I think it was up in the Kimberley. Um, we hit something hard and it didn't hurt the shock and those shocks are like 800 bucks a corner So that would have been so expensive if I didn't have those shock guards. The shock guards are like 100 bucks each or something um, I have dragged the entire car on on the bitumen on that shock guard with the entire weight of it with no wheel No damage. So I, whatever I hit I hit so hard and it bent it and that's fine I just got a, I've got a replacement at home. I'll chuck it on but it you know, like it's like a hundred dollar part to save my eight hundred dollar shock. Also, my shocks are still in good condition, which they absolutely would not have been if I didn't have those shock cars. They would be so peppered after one hundred and thirteen thousand k's of, you know, off road. Um, <clears throat> full full K on UVP under under vehicle protection, except for the fuel tank and the rear. Probably should have gone that. Um, now that I've got a dented, sort of scratched and slightly dented fuel tank, it's only like that big. Um, uh, very strong, haven't touched, haven't heard it at all. Um, yeah, I've rested the car on it many times, dragged it over rocks, dragged it over sticks. Things have flicked up underneath and bashed things. Downside, you have to take it off to service it, but I don't do that. So, okay, um, miss. Yeah, kind of miss. That, oh, I mean, dirt gets caught on, on it. <laughs> like, so, just put your hose on it. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any downsides to it, but I can't think of it weighs more than not being there. Um, the factory guards are a complete waste of time. Just get rid of them. They're like tin foil. Um, but yeah. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that gave you a little bit more of an idea of what it's like to own a Prado. So it's like, it's a reliable, easy, good family car. Um, I have a crazy amount of mods to this because I've had the opportunity to fit them. In hindsight, there's, there's stuff on here that I absolutely don't need and don't use. Um, and there's stuff on here that I didn't know I loved until I had it fitted for a few years and used it constantly. Like this thing. This is just the bomb. <laughs> That's how strong these are. <laughs> um, all right, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.